It's that time of the year when northern folks migrate south to balmy Florida for a little fun in the sun. But it's a pretty good bet the Detroit Lions have not brought their copper tone or a fat Harold Robbins novel along for beach reading. No, the Lions are here in Tampa Bay on a very important business trip. Unless they earn a win today against the Buccaneers, Detroit's playoff chances could be in serious jeopardy. It's been a real topsy-turvy season for the Motown men, and no one knows that better than their head coach, Monty Clark. The book on the Lions had been good home club, bad road team. But Monty's boys have disproven that this season. And at three and four, a win today on the road would alter that popular view some more. Quarterback Gary Danielson is the new leader on offense, having replaced Eric Hipple, the man who replaced him in 1981. Last week, Danielson threw for nearly 350 yards and three touchdowns in a close loss to the Minnesota Vikings. But that really was Danielson's first truly successful passing performance of the season. And this week, he faces the far less generous defense of the Buccaneers. The Bucs are still in the playoff picture primarily because of their hard-hitting defensive squad. Stingy against both run and pass, the Bucks could make matters difficult for their guests. When the Bucks have won this year, it was with defense and with enough big plays from Tampa Bay quarterback Doug Williams. It's been another typical Williams campaign. Not so hot passing stats, but a fair number of game-winning plays. Williams has the knack for finding ways to win ball games. And all of the Tampa faithful, including head coach John McKay, are hoping for some Williams magic again this afternoon. From Tampa Stadium, two NFC Central foes battle for one of the few remaining conference playoff spots. It's the Detroit Lions and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the NFL Game of the Week. Bucks proved to be very gracious hosts on the first play of the game by providing a short and very returnable kickoff to number 35, Alvin Hall. Hall brought the kick into Tampa territory, but the Lions failed to capitalize when a third down pass was caught, but out of bounds by number 20, Billy Sims. Detroit relinquished the ball to the Bucks, but this did not prove advantageous to the home team. Tampa Bay's first two possessions of the game were highly uneventful, thanks to excellent defensive play by the Lions. Detroit shut off all long gains and kept the short ones very short by stuffing Buck runners and sending Doug Williams to the turf on several occasions. Number 79, Bill Gay dropped Williams on this sack. And another first quarter trap was made by 11-year veteran Dave Pirafoy, number 75, adding to the Silver Rush's conference-leading sack total. Pirafoy has been around a long time with a lot of teams, but he still has excellent pass-rushing instincts. Another look at the sack shows that buck guard Sean Farrell knocked Dave off his feet, but he was still able to get up and take Williams down. Tampa Bay's offense was clearly not effective, and the Lion defense was hot. So, too, was the suddenly ablaze passing touch of Gary Danielson, who hit tight end David Hill, number 81, for a big gainer over the middle. Danielson then tried two passes to Leonard Thompson, both unsuccessful. 
But the third time was the charm, and Thompson, number 39, notched the first score of the game. Thompson has quickly become Danielson's favorite target. In the previous game against the Vikings, he caught five Danielson offerings for 160 yards and two touchdowns. This quick start against the Bucks indicated that Thompson was eager to do more of the same in this contest. With the score at seven to nothing as the first quarter drew to a close, the Bucks were still looking for an offensive spark. As the second period began, Tampa finally started to move the ball effectively. There were no big gains, but a consistent output of plays that kept the drive going. And it was running backs James Wilder and Melvin Carver picking up most of the yardage. Both Wilder and Carver made key catches, and Williams scrambled for a completion to tight end Jimmy Giles, number 88, on a third down play, setting up a 34-yard field goal by kicker Bill Capiz to put the Bucks on the scoreboard. Tampa Bay had finally shown some life on offense, and the Lions were hoping to do the same in response. Detroit's biggest weapon is usually running back Billy Sims, but in the previous game with the Vikings, Sims was held to only 22 yards rushing. It was imperative for the Lions to get the ball to Billy in any way, shape, or form, and that's what they did on their very next drive. Sims helped move the Lions downfield, but the march appeared over when number 20, Neil Colsey, stopped Sims in the backfield for a loss. But Danielson answered back by finding a horizontal David Hill diving successfully past a tenacious pass defender. Hill's catch put Detroit ahead 14 to three and is worth a second look, if only to admire one of the most photogenic plays of the Lions season. In some Detroit formations, Hill lines up as a fullback, but on this play, he looked like the most graceful of wide receivers. So far, this game had clearly belonged to Detroit. Last season, the Lions had won on the road only once but the squad seemed determined not to let that happen again. The Lions were dominating the hometown Buccaneers and knew that if they could keep the tempo going, they would win. With six minutes to go in the half, the Bucks had the ball again, but found only limited success against the Lion defense that would not give up the big play.
as the Bucks drew closer, the gains got shorter. And after the Lions held on successive downs inside their own 11, Tampa Bay had to settle for a second field goal by Bill Capice. As the half ended with the Lions clearly in command, Tampa Bay followers wondered if the Bucks had the stomach to reduce Detroit's eight-point bulge. It was a weighty issue that deserved some heavy thought. A quick peek at the scoreboard revealed that the Detroit Lions carried a 14-6 lead into the third period and that they had good reason to cast an eye toward a spot in the playoffs. But only if they could build that lead and sustain it. On the Lions' first possession of the third period, Gary Danielson threw just one pass, a 15-yarder to David Hill, then turned the ball over to his running backs. Billy Sims' 14 yards put the ball inside the Tampa Bay 35-yard line. And while Sims drew the most attention from Buck defenders, Horace King snuck through their secondary for another 25 yards. King's run advanced the Lions to the Tampa Bay three-yard line, and it remained for Billy Sims to complete the 71-yard scoring drive. Sims's touchdown stretched the Detroit lead to 15 points, a comfortable margin that gave their opponents food for thought. While Detroit chewed up most of their yardage on the ground, Tampa Bay responded by mixing it up with a more balanced approach. Engineering a 74-yard drive, Doug Williams completed all four of his passes, including a 27-yarder to tight end Jimmy Giles. After acknowledging the efforts of his colleagues, Williams elected to sign his name at the bottom line with a three-yard rollout that cut the Lion lead to eight points. Traditionally, it has been their defense that has made the Buccaneers contenders in their good years. This season, that defense has turned a 500 team into a contender. Perhaps they play better with a little of something on the line. Both defensive line coach Abe Gibron and defensive back coach Wayne Fonts made it clear that in order to paint themselves into the playoff picture, the Bucks better play a better brand of defense. Tampa defenders responded, and their swift strokes of the brush muddled the lion attack. In a high holiday spirit, a host of hungry buck defenders met Horace King at the line of scrimmage, packaged him, and mailed him home for New Year's. Number 63, defensive end Leroy Selman, did much of the wrapping himself, and his ribbon around Gary Danielson brought the Lions down to earth at their own three-yard line. After a Detroit punt netted just 25 yards, the Bucks wound up with a gift consisting of fine field position. Doug Williams then shared his team's good fortune with running back James Wilder, who accepted it at the 17-yard line and looked to share the joy of receiving with his teammates. When the ball was ruled dead at the Lion 2, Doug Williams avoided the tarnished silver rush, took his time, and spotted James Owens at the end line of the end zone. Touchdown grab plus the extra point, 
the Bucks suddenly found themselves within a point of the fading Lions. With more than 12 minutes remaining in the fourth period, it was clear that neither team was prepared to break the game open. Tampa Bay cornerback Cedric Brown, number 34, picked off a Gary Danielson pass. And before he had a chance to sit down, the Lions returned the favor. Linebacker Gary Cobb, number 53, coasted over to pick off a Doug Williams aerial at the two-yard line. While Cobb appeared to have plenty of energy in the final period, the Lions' offense did not. The many hooks of the Tampa defense were taking their toll. Pinned up against their own goal line, the Lions went to Billy Sims to bail them out. With little success up the middle, Danielson chose to stick with Sims, first in one direction, then another. After trying to run it out left, right, and center, the end result was a mere two yards. By this time, the Lions had given Tampa every opportunity to win, yet the Bucks seemed intent on throwing those opportunities away. Wide receiver Gordon Jones, number 84, did everything he could with the football, except hold on to it. Nevertheless, his juggling act was worth 24 yards. Next up was tight end Jimmy Giles. After rumbling for 22 yards, Giles became a victim of a disappearing ball act. But it was no act, as another look points out. Instead, it was some trickery on the part of the Lions secondary. Rookie linebacker Roosevelt Barnes reached in and stripped the ball from Giles' grasp. But the turnover didn't inspire the Lion offense. After three plays, they punted. With less than three minutes left in the game, there was plenty of enthusiasm on the Lions' sideline, but it did not carry over to the Lions on the field. From their own 22-yard line, Tampa Bay began their final march. James Wilder added to his afternoon total of seven catches and 73 yards. Then Doug Williams and his company of receivers headed for the sidelines, and the clock ticked a little slower. With a minute 46 left, James Wilder tacked on another six yards, but his line was called for holding, and the penalty had the Buccaneers up against the wall at third and 20. Doug Williams had little choice but to look long for his big play wide receiver, Kevin House. What looked to be the end of Tampa Bay's comeback drive proved to be just the opposite. It was ruled that Detroit cornerback Bobby Watkins, number 27, had been charged with pass interference. The penalty cost Watkins and the Lions 42 yards. A second look at the play reveals that it was a subtle infraction, almost undetectable from a distance. Despite protests from every lion within shouting distance, the call stood, and it was Buccaneer ball at the Detroit 13-yard line. With under 30 seconds on the clock, the Bucks had a new life. It became the responsibility of place kicker Bill Capice to make or break it for the Buccaneers. Peace had kicked two earlier field goals to give Tampa Bay their only points of the first half. But it's been a strange year for place kickers. An extra point or a chip shot has become as big a challenge as a 55-yard attempt and has more than a few coaches searching the good earth for a solution. 
On the season, though, Capiz is a perfect 12 for 12 on points after and has hit 13 of 17 field goal attempts. But this one field goal from 27 yards was do or die for Tampa Bay. The kick was good, and the second year man from Florida State University in Tallahassee felt right at home in Tampa Stadium. The three-pointer gave the Buccaneers a 23 to 21 lead with just 18 seconds to go. The only hope left for coach Monty Clark and his Lions was the bomb, but Gary Danielson didn't have the distance. Cornerback Norris Thomas, number 41, recorded the interception that all but dashed the Lions' hopes for a playoff bid. The Lions fell to three and five, while Tampa Bay moved up to four and four. But the Lions are not out of the playoff chase, and the Buccaneers still must beat the Chicago Bears in their regular season finale to be assured of a spot in the championship tournament. Who can say what this week will bring? Let the game be played, then turn the results over to the NFL computer. Only then will we learn who stays home and who moves on. <laughs>